Hello friends, in today's video we're going to be discussing lockouts inside our .NET Web API identity management. We're going to be seeing how we can actually lock out users if they have failed to enter their password correctly. We're going to be seeing how we can actually block the user from using our system for a certain amount of time because they have entered their password incorrectly. And we're going to be seeing how we can actually implement all of this inside our application. I'm Mohammed, and if you'd like to learn more about .NET, AWS and Azure, please make sure you subscribe and like this video. So now let's get started. So what I have here is I have a pretty simple web application. This web application contains two controllers, an authentication controller, as well as a Teams controller. So this application is already running. So if I take a look at the application, we can see that these are the two endpoints. And now if I go to try it out, and for example, I want to register, I can say here name, say Muhammad, email Muhammad at test com and let me give it here a random character and for the password i can put any random password and now i register so as we can see here once i register i got my token if i input my email and i register from here we can see i also got my token so now let me change something in my password so i'm going to change a or add a character to my password and I click on execute and we got a invalid credential so if i keep clicking on that no matter how many times I click it, I always gonna get an invalid credentials. I'm not getting locked out, I'm not getting anything. So now if for example, I get back the return, I get my token again. If I input my password wrong again, and I try to log in as well so many times, like, like this, I have clicked this button maybe, I don't know, 20 times already. I'm still able to log in as soon as I change it. And this is not a good behavior to do so. Why? Because basically, first of all, if someone is trying to brute force the password on any of my accounts, they will be able to do so because they will be able to hit my account with different configuration for the username and password, and they will be able to actually able to log in. The second thing here is my server is going to be hit by DDoS attack, which means that an infinite number of possibilities is going to be hitting my server, which means the resources of my server are going to skyrocket and which leads to my application to crash. Third, with all of that, I'm not able to protect users' information because this will lead to information data leakage and basically it will compromise the entire security of my application. And lastly, I need a way where I can actually protect my entire application as well. I need a way where I can actually enforce some kind of a regula regulations on password management and basically identity management within my application. And by not having any control over this, I will not be able to accomplish. So now let's see how we can actually implement some rules in order for me to protect my application. So now I'm going to go back to my source code. I'm going to stop my application. And the first thing that I want to do, I'm going to go to my program.cs. And inside my program.cs, what I want to do is I want to add some configuration to my identity management in order for me to utilize it. So let's see what I need to add it. So first things first. When I have here the adding default identity, what I want to do is I want to convert this into an options. So what I want to do here is instead of having this sign and requirement equal to false by itself, I'm going to have it as an options. And now I can have this here. And now what I want to do here is I want to add additional configuration for password lockout. And this is going to be the following options dot lockout dot allowed for new user equal to true, which just means that anyone who also register, they're allowed to have a lockout on their account. Now I need to specify how much is the lockout period so for example if i input my password correctly for like three times or five times and it fails how much time i have to wait before i input again so this is gonna be the time span and i'm gonna say here time span from minutes and it's gonna be five minutes and one last option that i would like to add here is how many times do they have to fail before they get lockout and i'm gonna say it's gonna be five times actually three times so if they input the password wrong three times they're gonna be locked out for five minutes and basically, when I, when I add these three items here regarding the password lockouts, what I'm doing here is basically I'm telling the new, I'm basically enforcing the user to wait every time they input the password wrong for five times, for three times, for the amount of five minutes. So now that I have inputted this here, what else do I need to do? Well, I need to go to my authentication controller and I need to update my login in order for me to take advantage of this. So as you can see here from the login code, what do I have? First of all, I'm checking if the email is valid, which is right. And then directly, I'm checking the for the password. We don't really want to do that. What we want to do first is we want to check if the user is locked out. And basically, if a user is locked out, I'm not going to be bothered by checking his password. So how can I do that? I'm going to say var user manager dot is locked out async. And I'm going to pass the user that I have, which is going to be existing user. So 
in case the user is locked out, what I need to do is say if is locked out, then what I need to do is I need to return an unauthorized request. So instead of a bad request, I'm going to say unauthorized. So I'm just going to copy this and I'm going to add it here. I'm going to say this is the wrong place to add it. So I'm going to add it here. Yes. And I'm going to say user is locked out. Please try again later. Try resetting the password, something like that. So this basically I'm giving enough information to the user to understand why they are not able to log in. Second item here is I want to check if the password is actually failing. I don't want it directly to just give invalid credentials. I want to actually implement the lockout mechanism here. So let's see how we can do that. So what I want to do here, I'm going to leave this here, but I'm going to add the following. So first of all, I need to increase the lockout count. That's going to be the first thing. The second thing that I need to do is I need to check with that increase if the user is locked out again. So let's see how we can do it. So in order for me to increase the lockout, again, I'm going to be relying on the user manager, which I'm going to use here, access fail async. And if we take a look at the description, it says increment the access fail count for the user as an asynchronous operation, which means that here I'm going to be increasing the number of failed attempts. So here I'm going to pass the user, which is going to fail, which is going to be existing user. So that's it. So this is basically I'm increasing the amount that the system is tracking of the failed password. The second thing that I need to do is I need to actually now start implementing the checking of the user is logged out again. So I'm just going to copy this because we already done it before and I'm going to do it here again and I'm not going to call it is locked out. I'm going to say check or user status, for example. So basically within this user status, I'm checking if the user is locked out or not. So I'm going to say if user status is true, which means the user is locked out. I'm just going to return back an unauthorized request. And then I'm going to say else. I'm going to return this. So this is going to be the scenario here. So first, if the user is locked out, I'm going to be returning a locked out error message. Else, I'm going to be returning the invalid credentials one. Actually, we don't really need the else here. We can just directly utilize this. Okay, perfect. Let's fix this. So now that we have this in place, if we take a look at here, so now that we have this in place and we have implemented all of this logic, now let's test it out. So if I run on my application again, I'm going to start here, first of all, by trying to log in again. So this is the right one. I got my token perfect. Now I'm going to change my password to something invalid. Click on execute. We got invalid credentials. Now what I want to do, I want to check my database. So I'm going to go back to Rider and I'm going to open my database and I'm going to go to edit data. And now, for this user, if we take a look at the email, which is this one, if we go all the way to the end, we can see that it's enabled for this user and I have one failed access account. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to log in again and we can see this is another failure. So now if I refresh this, as we can see now I have two, I'm going to go execute again, user lockout again, refresh. Now this is three time and basically I got locked out because if we take a look at my configuration here inside my code what I have here is I said that like after three failed attempt I need to be locked out so now inside my table here I'm basically I have my locked out date and I have my locked out counter reset to zero and now if I go back to the error message I got that the user is locked out please either try la again later or the password is resetting so now no matter how many times I try to log in I'm still getting locked out and if I click on refresh, the user is locked out. So we're not re-increasing the access failed count, which is great. And here we can see this is how we can actually implement a lockout on the login. Now there is one thing missing still that we need to implement is what happen if a user try to log in and after a specific amount of time, so on the second attempt, they actually input the right password. I don't want to keep the counter to be increasing. So how can I do that? That's going to be quite simple. I'm going to go back to my authentication controller and I'm going to say here that after they have inputted the user password correctly, which is going to be here in case there is anything, I'm going to basically just reset the counter again. And to do so, I'm going to put await user manager dot reset access failed count. And this basically is going to reset it for the user. And now let's try this out. I'm going to run this again, go to my web browser and I'm just going to register for a new user. I'm going to change this email to here and this is going to be i'm going to put muhammad dust so we can know it's a different one and now let's execute the user has registered successfully and now if i go to my login here and try to log in we can see here the login is successful if i add a wrong password we can see i got invalid credentials if we go to my database and i refresh this we can see here now I have my new email, Muhammad Test. And if I go here, we can see its account lockout is enabled. 
But now, for example, let's say I input it correctly, that number one should go back to zero. We can see that the failed access count is back to zero. If I input it again and I refresh, we can see it went back to two. If I input it correctly, now it should reset back to zero. And refresh here and we can see it went back to zero. Perfect. So this has been a very quick video about how we can actually implement Lockout inside our web APIs and how we can actually protect it from the DOS attack and from malicious users. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. It will really help the channel as well. If you have any questions, please make sure you put them in the comments down below. If you'd like to support me, please consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.